Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I'm super excited today because I have recently received my copy of HeroQuest The Frozen Horror and it's pretty spectacular. I pre-ordered this from an online store and it was less than £34, which is an incredible deal for the amount of game packed into this box. So in today's video, we're going to dive right in, take a look at all the game components, go over the new rules, avoid spoilers as much as possible, and give my general impressions. But first, what exactly is the Frozen Horror? This is Hasbro's new edition of the Barbarian Quest Pack expansion for HeroQuest, which originally came out in 1992. This expansion focused on the Barbarian character class, introducing an exciting new quest into the Frozen Wastelands to destroy the Frozen Horror before it can team up with Zargon. Some of the major selling points included a female version of the Barbarian, three solo missions for a brave Barbarian to tackle without assistance from the rest of the gang, and a host of new monsters, including Polar War Bears and the titular Horror itself. Unlike the Return of the Witch Lord and Keller's Keep, the Frozen Horror was never released in Europe first time around, so while this is surely an exciting release for everybody who loves HeroQuest, I am extra excited about this one because I'm from the UK and this will be my first time playing it. And it's worth clarifying, if you have played the Frozen Horror, perhaps even own an original copy, there aren't going to be any surprises for you in this box. The artwork and miniatures are all new, but everything pays homage to the original release, and all the rules and quests are straight reprints. In many cases, even the wording on items and rules remains unchanged. In fact, so unchanged are the rules that certain problematic issues from the original release are still present. For example, the Yetis have a hug attack that is broken for solo missions, as a hero cannot escape it without assistance from an ally. That rule is still present in the new edition, creating the same problem. In fairness, Hasbro have actually done something about this. They released a free online quest on their blog called Into the Northlands, I'll put a link in the video description, and as part of that release, they included a few rules updates and patches to remedy some of the common issues from the Frozen Horror. That's great, and I do appreciate Hasbro's commitment to ironing out those issues and supporting the game through online content, but really, those new rulings should have been baked into this new expansion right from the start. But with that minor complaint out of the way, let's move on. First of all, this expansion is coming in a much bigger box than Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord. It's approximately 26.5cm by 26.5cm by 6.5cm, and it has a nice piece of artwork that directly reflects the artwork from the original expansion, just in that more modern World of Warcraft sort of style that Hasbro has adopted for the reissue. And many people will be pleased to know you won't need to crack out the hairdryer to peel off any sticker seals this time around. This expansion was actually shrink-wrapped. And when you remove the lid, you are presented with a really rather nice, well-thought-out insert where everything is locked into place. Right at the top here, we have the advertising flyer for the companion app, and that app has already been updated with the expansion, which means you can play through the whole campaign without a Zargon player to run the dungeon for you. Also, I just have to show you this. Under the punch board, under the rules book, you get not one, but two layers of gaming goodness. I like how they made sure the frozen horror was right there to greet you when you open the box. It's a suitably impressive chunk of menacing evil. Now you may remember that the insert for the HeroQuest core game held the miniatures dangerously tightly. I mean so tightly, there was a risk the miniatures would bend or break as you took them out of the packaging. This new insert seems less severe. The miniatures seem to pop out quite easily, but I would still recommend an alternative storage solution to keep your miniatures in the best condition possible. Moving on, we have our quest book. As with the core game booklets, this has a nice thread stitched binding. They could have gone with a good old fashioned saddle stitch, but this is a much more elegant solution. And in this booklet, you are getting 10 new quests, which I won't show you. The first three are solo adventures, that means one barbarian against the might of a Zargon player, or the companion app if you want to play a truly solo experience. Then there are five regular group quests for a party of four heroes, followed by a special two-part quest, which is also for four heroes. And do note, even though this expansion includes a new female barbarian, the rules do state you are still only supposed to have one barbarian on your team. Additionally, this booklet contains references for the alchemist shop and new artifacts. We actually get cards for all that stuff too, which I will go through in a minute. There's a contents list, and then all of the new rules. 
That includes the rules for going into shock, which happens when your hero runs out of mind points, because mind points actually become much more important now. There's also clarifications on how you can pass equipment among heroes, and how to defend against multiple attacks from a single enemy. You can't. The war bears get two attacks per activation, and if they attack the same hero with both attacks, that hero only gets to defend against one of them. That's pretty scary. Also in the book we have pages you can photocopy to design your own maps. On the punch board there are new tokens and room tile overlays that allow you to reshape the board in interesting new ways. Many of the new overlays don't just change the appearance of the dungeon to give it an icy theme, they also introduce new rules and threats. As a reminder for anybody who has the original edition of Hero Quest and is looking at getting this expansion to use with that original copy, do bear in mind Hasbro did scale up the game board for the new edition, and that means these tokens and overlays and even the miniatures are oversized for an original Hero Quest board. Anyway, this is the ice ledge which heroes must circumvent to avoid falling to their deaths. These are slippery ice tiles. They are placed on the board like a trap when a hero steps on one. Every time you step on ice you roll a white dice, and if you roll a shield you fall over and your turn ends. Fallen heroes cannot defend against attacks, so that's really dangerous. You get some magic ice tiles, which work in conjunction with certain spells to make walls and bridges. There are three sets of ice tunnels that heroes can crawl through to quickly move around the map. There is an additional rule for these tunnels in the Into the Northlands download that says that if a hero goes through a tunnel and ends up on a space that is occupied by another hero, that hero is moved to an adjacent space. And then we have the super fun ice slide. This is another kind of ice themed trap. You don't place it on the board to begin with, but when a hero stands on the first square of the slide, you place the overlay on the board and the hero whizzes to the bottom. They then roll a white dice and will lose one body point if it turns up a shield. The rules state that multiple heroes can be in the bottom space of the ice slide at the same time. Then there are ice rivers. Each space in the ice river counts as two points of movement, and each time you move into an ice river space, you roll a combat dice and lose one body point on the roll of a shield. You may be noticing a trend here. There are lots of environmental hazards in this expansion. Next up, we have a selection of cool new rooms. We have the ice vault, where each turn you roll one combat dice and lose one body point if you roll a skull. There is the living fog room where the fog takes on the form of monsters to distract the heroes. This is the scepter room where the heroes can find a powerful artifact. Guess which one? We have the bottomless chasm. You can try to jump it if you want to, but be prepared for the very obvious consequences. There is the frozen crypt where numerous enemies are frozen in ice. Can't imagine what might happen there. There is a cage room, an ice gremlin treasure room, the Seat of Power, with a throne two sizes too small for the Frozen Horrors butt, and then the Ice Cave Entrance, a nice thematic piece used as an entry or exit point for some dungeons. The punch board also has various other tokens, more skulls, more walls, and a special key. So, plenty of new stuff there, lots of overlays that are really going to make the dungeons in this expansion feel different to anything you have explored before. But of course, that's not all. This expansion also introduces a new hero, new enemies, and hired mercenaries. An expansion that contains miniatures. Who would have thought, Games Workshop? First, let's take a look at the Barbarian. I really like this miniature. It's got a few issues, I think the shield is too thick, and her feet are oversized, but I like the miniature for a few reasons. Firstly, as with a lot of the miniatures in this set, it's a homage to the original Frozen Horror Barbarian. Secondly, I think they've done a really good job of making her look like a barbarian, while still making her distinct from the male barbarian from the core set. When Hasbro crowdfunded the new edition of Hero Quest, one of the incentives was a set of alt-gender heroes, including a female barbarian. That miniature was good, but it felt a little bit like they took the male barbarian miniature and just added female characteristics. Kind of like one of those mobile phone filters that changes your gender. This new barbarian feels distinct, like her own character, and I like that. Having said that, this is still just a gender swap for the barbarian. She doesn't have any different stats or powers compared to the core set barbarian. It's just a nice alternative and an opportunity for people to choose a miniature that they feel better reflects them in the game. My daughter will love this one. Next we have the mercenaries. There are four types and you get three of each. In the original Frozen Horror, they were represented by miniatures that had interchangeable weapons, so they all had the same basic stance, just with different equipment loadouts. 
This time we get four unique sculpts, and in a nice touch, half of the sculpts are female. The idea with these mercenaries is twofold. Firstly, they turn up in certain quests as enemies to fight. Additionally, heroes can hire mercenaries to join them on quests. Each merc has a price that you must pay before each adventure starts. I get happy advanced hero quest vibes from that. So here we have the Swordsman. I would say this is the weakest sculpt in the set. The sword is too wide and rounded, and the pose is just a bit static. He costs 100 gold to hire, and is just a basic bruiser. He has a movement of 5, attacks with 4 dice, defends with 5 dice, has 2 body points and 2 mind points. Just a chunky dude. Then we have a female halberdier. Again, not the most exciting pose. In all honesty, the monsters in this set are much, much nicer than the new mercs, but she has good detailing. She costs 75 gold to hire, has a movement of 6 squares, attacks with 3 dice, defends with 3 dice, has 2 body points and 2 mind points. A nice bonus with the halberdiers though, is they can attack diagonally. Next we have the crossbowman. His crossbow seems a little small and stunty, but I really like how they did something completely different with the posing here. This is the first miniature for the game where we don't have a standard standing pose. The crossbowmen cost 75 gold to hire, they have a movement of 6, attack with 3 dice, defend with 3 dice, have 2 body points and 2 mind points, and obviously they can attack at range with their crossbows. Finally, we have the female scouts. The swords are the weakest part of the sculpts, but I love the shields. These are probably my favourite sculpts of the four different types of merc. The scouts cost 50 gold to hire, they attack with 2 dice, defend with 3 dice, have 2 body points and 2 mind points. The big selling point for these is they have a movement of 9 squares, and they can also spot and disarm traps in the same way as the dwarf. Moving on, we have our new enemies. First, the gremlins. I love these little guys. You get three of them, and I think the sculpts are lovely. I get some serious old-school horror movie vibes from them. I'm thinking Leprechaun or Troll. The gremlins move 10 squares, attack with 2 dice, defend with 3 dice, have 3 body and 3 mind. They have a special ability that allows them to steal items off heroes and then do a bunk. It's interesting to have an enemy that doesn't just fight to the death. Next we have the Yeti. You get two of these and I think the sculpts are fantastic. Look at the character in the face and the knuckle sandwich pose. If it wasn't for the strength of the sculpts we still need to take a look at, these yetis could have been my favourites in the box. In terms of stats we have a move of 8, 3 attack, 3 defence, 5 body points and 2 mind points. Yetis also get the special hug attack that incapacitates a hero and prevents them from doing anything until someone else kills the yeti. Then we have my favourites, the pure awesomeness that is the Polar War Bears. Chunky sculpts with great armour and ridiculous spiked clubs. Hey, my first pick for Tekken was always Kuma, of course I like these guys. Stats are scary, we get 6 movement, 4 attack, 3 defence, 6 body points and 2 mind. And of course, these bears get to make 2 attacks per turn. Absolute savages. Finally, we have the big bad, the star attraction, the Frozen Horror. The original Frozen Horror miniature spanned two spaces on the board. This one covers four. It's a huge chunk of plastic with a suitably intimidating axe. It also has a nice sculpted base. And under the base, this is a neat feature. This is the perfect big boss for this expansion, a true threat for the Barbarian to face. Stats are eight movement, five attack, 4 defense, 6 body points, and 4 mind points. The Frozen Horror is also a spellcaster with a selection of brutal dread spells. That's almost it for the miniatures. The last thing of note is the two doors. These are like the entry and exit doors from Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord, only they have a nice snowy design. Fantastic work on these. We are nearing the end of our tour of the expansion. We just have a few cards left to look at. This isn't exactly spoilers, but if you don't want to know what new items you might find in the treasure deck, or what spells the Frozen Horror may throw at you, you might want to skip ahead to the timestamp showing on screen right now. If not, we will move on. I'm not going to read through each card, this video is already quite long, you can just pause and read them yourself if you want to. Let's just cover the basics. These represent the four new potions available from the potion shop between adventures. Three of them are only for use by the Barbarian, and they are all rather expensive. But as I've mentioned many times before, 
I do like consumable items in games a lot, and it's nice to have something to spend all your ill-gotten gains on. Next we have 6 new treasure cards to shuffle into the deck. You get 2 poisons, 2 potions of magic resistance, and 2 potions of warmth. That's basically 2 trap cards and 4 more consumables. While these cards are for the Frozen Horror campaign, there's nothing really stopping you adding these treasure cards into your deck for all of your campaigns, no matter if you're playing the core game or any of the other expansions. It's just worth noting that doing so increases the number of trap cards in the deck, but also increases the overall size of the treasure deck, which means you are less likely to draw wandering monsters. That actually works quite well for the Frozen Horror campaign, as many of the quests serve up multiple wandering monsters at the same time, so it's nice they don't pop up quite so often. Then we have our artifacts, 10 in total, which can be divided into two groups. First you have the Amulet of the North, the Ring of Warmth, the Armband of Ice and the Snowshoes of Speed. These are all permanent items you will find on your quests and are thematically tied to the Frozen Horror campaign. The remaining 6 cards are Spell cards, which are one use items that allow the user to cast a spell even if they are not the Wizard or Elf. The interesting thing here is if you find a scroll, you shuffle these 6 cards and draw one at random, so you can't always guarantee which spell you're going to get. And speaking of spells, the last 6 cards in the expansion are the icy themed dread spells for Zargon to throw at the heroes. It's always nice to have spells to hit the heroes with, and some of these are really rather nasty. At this point you would think that the expansion had done enough, that it had truly delivered enough content to justify the price point, but Avalon Hill didn't stop there. They threw in two more things that are not only incredibly useful, but also integrate into the icy theme. First we have a new pad of hero sheets, printed in blue and with a snowy design. Between the pads from the core game and this massive wedge of extras, I can't imagine anybody ever running out of sheets. And then we get a particularly nice bonus, a set of thematic dice. Two blue movement dice and six translucent blue combat dice. More combat dice are always a bonus, and because these ones are completely different to the ones in the core set, you can do opposed dice rolls at the same time, which can help to speed up gameplay, especially if you are running a solo campaign. And that really is everything, but what more could you want? Maybe it would have been nice to give the new Barbarian a power or item to make her unique from the regular Barbarian, but honestly, I'm happy with her just being an alternative sculpt. Other than that, I think this expansion covers all the things you would want, and then goes the extra mile by including dice and character sheets. The quantity and quality is excellent for the price point, and while some of the miniatures aren't amazing, the new enemies look fantastic. Obviously I haven't played the campaign yet, so I can't speak to the quality there. I am going to try to put a solo Barbarian playthrough on the channel, using the companion app to run the dungeon for me. I thought that might be fun, especially as it will be quite a while before I get to this campaign with my gaming group. But I think that about covers it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments because that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.